Hey everybody, I hope and pray that you're doing well today. So we come to our word from the word. And today that word is encouragement. Encouragement. Now, that's something we've all enjoyed being on the receiving end of in, enjoying some encouragement from others. But I wonder sometimes how often we are working to encourage others. Now, as we've been seeing through the book of Job, that Job has some wonderful encouragers. And I hope you caught the sarcasm there because he tells them they've been miserable comforters. And they're going back and forth. And, and here you see today, we're going to see Eliphaz's uh, response to Job and something that he's trying to tell Job. And this is something that you would really see even today uh, taught at some places across the world. Uh, there would be some places even in our nation that would try to say, well, or even those who maybe think it themselves that, well, I've got to fix everything myself and then the Lord will bless. So let's think about that. And even as we're preparing our own hearts to give encouragement to others, let's make sure we're giving them sound encouragement. Let's make sure we're giving them biblical uh, doctrine to encourage them with. Now, at the same time, if they are, you think about it in this context, if they were in sin, that's one conversation. If they're not in sin, as in Job's case, then there should be a different discussion. You say, well, how do we know the difference? Well, that's when we lean on the Holy Spirit for sure. So today in Job chapter 22, I'm going to read a few more verses than I normally do, but I want you to see the kind of the effect of what Eliphaz is saying here in starting in verse 21, reading down through verse 30. It says, now acquaint yourself with him and be at peace. Thereby good will come to you. Receive, please, instruction from his mouth and lay up his words in your heart. If you return to the Almighty, you will be built up. You will remove iniquity far from your tents. Then you will lay your gold in the dust and the gold of Ophir among the stories, uh, sorry, among the stones of the brooks. Yes, the Almighty will be your gold and your precious silver. For then you will have your delight in the Almighty and lift up your face to God. You will make your prayer to him. He will hear you and you will pay your vows. You will also declare a thing and it, sh and it will be established for you, so light will shine on your ways. When they cast you down and you say, exaltation will come, then he will save the humble person. He will even deliver the one who is not innocent. Yes, he will be delivered by the purity of your hands. Now, some of this you take, okay, well, the doctrine they said, a lot of that, that sounds like something we'd hear today, right? If if we if you come back to God, if you get right with God, then then he's going to bless you with material. He's going to bless you with material blessings. So well, let me ask you this. What happens when the material blessings don't come? How many people in our nation right now, how many people that you know of have turned their back on God because they didn't get the material possessions that people maybe claim that they ought to. There's so many of those, uh, you know, preachers today that are, are out there preaching a message that is, oh, well, yeah, everything's going to just be wonderful. And if you just, man, you just live the best life that you can. And man, God's just going to just pour and rain money down on you. And and if you don't, so it, that basically means that that theology and doctrine is basically teaching, okay, so if you don't have money, then you must be in sin. You must be out of God's will. There's some that even go as far to preach that if you're sick, right, that every sickness, every illness is a judgment of sin, saying basically if you're sick, then you're in sin. Now, we could spend a lot of time diving into all of those. And look, all of this, right, all this does come down to sin. But the sin that happened in the garden, the general sin, not necessarily specific sins in our life. Do I believe that there are certain things that we face because of decisions that we've made? Absolutely. Those are called consequences. It's called discipline from the Heavenly Father. But we also know that He allows those things only to get us to look more at Him, to turn our eyes back on Him. See, that's the kind of encouragement that we need. The kind of encouragement that Job is receiving from his friends is, 
Look, Job, we don't care what you say. We think you're a liar. We think you're a hypocrite. There's no way that God would ever allow this to happen to a righteous man. So you need to repent because that's the only way God's going to bless you. And if Job had a, a, a fallen for that lie, he would have proved Satan to be telling the truth when he was arguing with God. And he would have, he would have basically proven that God was a liar. Praise the Lord that Job was steadfast in his faith. Yes, he, he had all kinds of questions and, and things beyond his comprehension that he didn't understand, but he could still say, though he slay me, I will trust in him. Oh, I know my Redeemer lives. I know that I can't stand before God. See, the only encouragement he needed was the word of God. Wouldn't it be wonderful if he'd gotten words from friends as well? Words of God from friends. I wonder today, maybe you've received some bad encouragement, some bad words of advice in the past. Maybe you've been thoughtful to try to not pass along those uh, that, that bad advice to others. Maybe you've tried to be calculated in, in how you share encouragement. And that's a good place to start. But have you ever just stopped to think, Maybe the only encouragement that I need to give people is straight from the word of God. Maybe I just need to give them a verse to encourage them, a truth from scripture. That way it's not my words, but it's God's word that's doing the encouraging. Now, I don't know about you, but that's an encouragement that will last. God bless you, and I pray you have a great, great day.